So what I'm going to talk about today is this uh, small extruder that I had remixed from uh, the Hextrudor, which was uh, the Mirage C, lightweight Mirage C extruder that I actually, I, I think I really saw it um, the first time on the VZBot, one of uh, uh, Simon's videos, uh, where he was ex printing extremely fast with one of these lightweight extruders. Uh, so I tried to print one myself, and my first, I guess, couple of shots at doing this. It, I had a hard time printing it, just the way that it was shaped and the the orientations. I, I couldn't find a way to print it without that didn't require a lot of supports. So I, I downloaded the models and I kind of remixed it myself to make it a little easier to print and also to be compatible with the uh, Eva carriage on uh, my printer, uh, the, the Rat Rig V Core 3 that I just recently built. So I'm going to show you how this goes together and what parts you would need to print to get this also working on your printer. So there really aren't that many parts for this. Uh, we've got a back plate. Uh, this is what uh, you're going to use to mount to your carriage as well as uh, it's going to also support the NEMA 14 uh, pancake stepper that you're going to use. now. The NEMA 14, these are the round, I think they're 36 millimeters round, and they come with a spur gear already installed. It's a 10 tooth spur gear, and you have to get this one with the gear already installed because it's got a really short shaft, and it will mesh up to the uh, Bontech uh, gear, uh, drive gear over here, uh, just right when you get it together. So that's the other thing that you're gonna need is a donor extruder, it's some type of BMG clone, or a rebuild pack or parts pack of the BMG clone. Now I found that not all of these things are the same. So th this one that I got from, I think this is a Triangle Labs clone, I got this one from, and the difference is in this, this uh, drive wheel. And on this one, this is the one that you need. It's about three millimeters. So this is the correct gear for this extruder for this kit to work right um, is a three millimeter thick gear. Now I did buy like one of these really inexpensive ones off Amazon and I had a problem getting this to work and what I found out is that the gear on this kit it's not three millimeters it's just about four millimeters so it's a one millimeter difference and that actually does make a difference in this kit. It does not work right. Um, I'd have to remix these parts to allow for the extra one millimeter clearance on this gear and I just didn't have time to do it. I grabbed another another uh, BMG type extruder I had and took it apart and I found that they did have the different gears and if you look at them side by side you can see that uh, there's a little bit of difference here in the pattern. And there is my cat. Alright, hold on. So the parts are different, and just realize that um, these uh, dot bit brand does not work. That's this this brand here. This does not work, but the Triangle Labs BMG clones work. The original or um, the real BMG clones or real BMG extruder will work, obviously. And then also I purchased a kit from Pelosi 3D. Uh, with just the parts without the housing and that worked just fine too. It had the correct gear like this in that part. So I know that those work. The, the um, Genuine BMG, the Pelosi 3D rebuild kit and the Triangle Labs brand BMG type extruder have the correct uh, thickness uh, gear in there. So about the parts you have this uh, back plate and it does require Support, supports touching build plate just for this little spot right back here because it needs to capture a nut that kind of holds the parts together. Uh, so, but it's still, it'll print, you know, flat on the build plate like this, but you're just going to have supports touching build plate right here and then you're going to put in a little M3 captured nut in the back side there just to, to kind of hold, hold the assembly together once it's done. Uh, then you have the main body of the assembly, which is pretty simple. Uh, it's this piece right here, and it prints flat like this. And you can do supports touching build plate, but what I found I didn't really need it. Uh, I was able to print really cleanly without any supports. Um, but if you 
one, I guess you could have them touching build plate, but there is a captured nut in the back side here. And then a square nut slot for the thumb screw that's in the top, which a little square nut will fit in like that. And then you have the latch, which will fit a one part of your uh, BMG uh, extruder gear, like the loose gear will go in here. Um, and I just used an M3 screw and it's not too tight. You can see it spins pretty well. And this prints flat really easily like that. And then this is like the little cover. Uh, this will get one of your little bearings uh, in here. And this within the top part and that kind of, that's at the very last step when you've got it assembled, you'll put that in there. Um, and you could have it, put it on the actual gear before you put it in the part. So that also works. But all these are really easy to print. Uh, supports minimal, uh, just touching bill print, bill plate, and that's all you need. Uh, so to put it together, the first thing that you need to do is you need to f get your your drive gear here, and it, this one goes uh, through the back side like this. You can see there's a recess there. It's going to fit just like that, and then you're going to put your gear on. Now on the on the BMG, these gears um, go this way. But on this extruder, which I call the HX or, or Hextrudor Modified or Remix, they go backwards like this. So you've got to put this in first, uh, sorry, like that. And then this gear will go that way. And it should be really close to lining up with the filament path. So you're going to want to kind of eye that and tighten it down when it's in there. You know, push it together here and then tighten it down. There you go. And then you're going to have your other piece here. And I just use M3 screw here. That'll fit in. Should get just to the end. I'll get to the correct sizes for all of these uh, in the description or in the link below. Uh, the Thingiverse account. So this doesn't need to be especially tight. It just it's gonna just barely poke to the back there. Um, and you can see that everything meshes pretty well. And then it's gonna go before you put it on the back here. You gotta put one of your bearings. Now, one thing I've, I found is that the consistency of these is not all the same. So you might have a little more, a little less protrusion on your shaft. So once you put this on this way, it should be flush with this back panel. If it's not flush, if it's recessed, it's fine. If it sticks out, you have to fix that because if it sticks out, it's going to end up um, pressing on your motor. Your motor's not going to be able to sit right. So if it sticks out, what I found is that um, I can basically I take I take all this off. I'll, I'll show, you, show you on, on here on this one. Um, I took a small socket and I just rest it on that. And what it's going to do, it's, it's going to press on the gear. See how it's kind of flush there and then you don't need a lot of force just with a small hammer just a couple you just knock it a couple times and it's gonna sh move the shaft you know the, the gear a little further down on the shaft just enough so that when you do assemble it that you have proper alignment so once you have your alignment you know it's checked here you've got your bearing on the back you've got your back plate on now you're gonna turn it over Put your bearing on the front and install your little cap also on the front and use your M3. This is a little bit longer one. This is going to go in and basically thread through the body and it's going to grab onto that little captured nut that we had over here. that. 
And then on the other hole here, this is gonna thread through the capture nut that's, that's right back here behind on the body. You don't need these super tight, but you do want them pretty good and snug. Now once these are together, you know, you can check to make sure that everything turns properly. Nothing is binding. That's pretty good. There we go. If you do need an alignment, you might need to loosen your gear a little bit. Uh, the one that we first tightened, the one on the, on the shaft. But it should, it should, you know, with just your fingers, it should uh, go pretty well. And once that's proper, then this can go on and it will just, it'll mesh, it'll find its place and then I just, for temporary purposes, I'm just gonna put these here. Hold it in place. And There you go. Now it's assembled. And on the Eva carriage, you're gonna have a mounting hole here and the other mounting hole here. And then with the the plate on top of the, uh, the linear rail, it'll have an arm that comes up. That'll kind of help you have longer longer screws that will go through and help support this thing. But I've been using this, this extruder, exactly the same thing on my printer for for at least 100 hours on the rat rig. And then before that I had a basically a hypercube that I took apart to make the rat rig that had the same extruder and probably a couple hundred hours on that and never ever had an issue. Everything prints great. Um, you know, it just, it's just an extruder and it works. Uh, it's a little lighter than something like the uh, Orbiter, which I have one of those here too, which I was probably gonna use for a different project. Uh, a little bit lighter than that. Um, the Orbiter is very light. Uh, this is a, a store-bought one. Um, these are SLS printed parts, so it's pretty good quality. But um, this is going to be for another project. Uh, but this one is going to go on uh, my rat rig and, or possibly remix into something else that I've been looking to build. Uh, if you know where this comes from, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, anyway, the print quality on this came out great and I printed it with this extruder on the rat rig. so. I don't have any any hesitance about you know using this in other projects. It's it's a great little extruder. I'm uh, pretty happy with it. So uh, see the link in the description for the Thingiverse page for the files. Uh, I'll leave a model up there too, so people can uh, remix it if they want. Uh, but it's a lightweight uh, extruder using a NEMA 14 motor. Uh, most of these are going to be the LDO motors. This one's from Stepper Motors Online. Uh, they all pretty much work the same. Uh, for steps per millimeter, uh, when I was running Marlin with this, it was around 680 steps. So start there and then go up or down depending on what it you know looks like. On the rat rig, it was they used rotation distance, which is a little different uh, than steps. And currently on the rat rig, I think I am at. Let me find it here in my config. Here we go. I am at 4.54 for the rotation distance. Again, that's rotation distance is 4.54 uh, on Clipper. So if you're using Clipper, use start with 4.54 for rotation distance on your extruder uh, section on your config file. And for Marlin, start at 680 steps uh, per rotation or uh, for your config in Marlin. Anyway, that's that's what it is. Um, it's a great little extruder. Uh, you can print it yourself and it uh, works great. I have, like I said, no, no uh, you know, qualms about using it. I've seen other people use it way faster than I'm using it. So I, I'm, printing, I'm not worried. I mean, if, if uh, Simon Vez can print it 800 plus millimeters a second using this thing, then I'm not worried about it. I think it's a great little extruder. So check out those guys' channels and uh, if I get come up with any new ideas, I'll I'll uh, put them up and you can see them. Thanks.